Okay, hello, I will try it without the microphone, is it okay? Okay. Uh, presenter? Hello everybody, so uh, first of all I want to make a short introduction into Ars Electronica, so to get, oh, to get an idea about uh, why we have this blinking museum in a small city like Linz. Does anybody know Linz? Yeah. Very nice. Okay, you from yesterday, I suppose. <laughs> uh, Linz is a, it's the third largest town in Austria. It's between Salzburg and Vienna. And uh, I would say about 40 years ago, Linz had, had a really bad image. In Linz, it stinks, was the thing people said, because we have a really big steel industry. Still we have the steel industry, but it no longer stinks. And for 40, 40 years ago, uh, interesting people thought about how can we uh, change this image of Linz into some more innovative, into some more uh, interesting, future-like, and they thought about to founding a festival, Ars Electronica, in the triangle of art, technology, and society. And the main thing in this time, 1979, the first festival, well, was the computer technology, which was really not just starting because the first personal computer came into the market in 1981, so two years later. And so there was a festival in Linz with about, I would say, 30 to 40 people from all over the world talking about, about this technology and what this technology maybe uh, will influence on our society. And of course, they also invited some artists because artists are interesting because they are breaking the borders and they are bringing new uh, sites and they're opening possibilities. So since then, since 1979, we have this triangle of art, technology and society and we're making this festival every year. Uh, and the really crucial thing for us is, and you will see it afterwards in my presentation, uh, that we are not only sitting together in our own round and talking to each other and the experts, but what we really try is to involve the audience. We try to involve uh, the, the whole uh, public, and this was since the first time. And the idea in 1979 was to create a sound cloud uh, over Upper Austria. So Upper Austria, about 1.5 million inhabitants. And 1979 there was a, a nice concert with uh, Bruckner. And the idea was okay to put big speakers uh, around the Danube place and to uh, broadcast this uh, concert live in the whole uh, area of the Danube and to make a laser show. A laser show was in 1979 really a spe special thing. Nobody knew about the laser show. So, and it really, uh, it really worked. There were more than 100,000 live uh, visitors there uh, listening to the music and uh, looking at the laser show. And the second thing, for all those who uh, wouldn't, couldn't come to Linz, but then up up Austria, they uh, were told to put their radios into the open window and put the music loud on. Uh, in the, on the uh, radio, the same uh, concept was broadcasted. So it was really a sound cloud over whole Upper Austria. Uh, since then, it's really uh, crucial for us that we have always our focus not only on the things we are doing, but on, on the thing, how can we uh, catch the audience, how can we involve them, how can we really uh, reach a big target group, not only the 10 or 15 percent who are interested in cultural heritage, but really to uh, uh, catch all of them or nearly all of them. So there's a festival, then we founded a pre ars Electronica, maybe you have heard about it, would be interesting if the uh, Mosul project will submit for the next pre ars Electronica, it's the price, it's the highest price for media art, it's 10,000 euros. Maybe this will help this project a little bit, could be interesting, we have a uh, category for uh, digital communities and this will be fit perfectly. Uh, and since 1996, uh, since about 20 years, we got this museum, the Museum Ars Electronica, uh, the museum of the future, so we don't can show the future, that's 
clear. But what we are doing there, we are focusing on the topics what we think our future uh, will uh, will touch, uh, will impact, have impact on our future. And of course, the technology, the change of the technology is one of these uh, things which will have impact. Uh, and what we've got here are exhibitions, but I don't want to uh, talk too much about the exhibitions at large. I want to talk about a special room, and this is the Deep Space 8K. So you see the focus is on the visitors, is on uh, the, we want to wow our visitors. We want to include them, we want to uh, take that they are part of it. And so we have here a really unique technical equipment. This is our test. Uh, we tested it uh, in our future lab with our own uh, research and development unit, the future lab, who is developing the deep space. And for example, I don't know if you heard, a few meters away, the spy museum here in Berlin was opened a few weeks ago, and the whole uh, installations in the spy museum are from Asiatronica. Uh, so we have here uh, eight 4K projections from Christy. Four are for the wall and four are for the floor. And with this environment, we can really create 8K resolution. So that four times 4K or 16 times HD resolution on 16 square nine meter. And this is what it looks like. You have here the audience is really sitting in the presentation area and they are allowed to stand up and go around to get really a feeling of a new way of uh, information, a new way of experience things, experience projects. And we have different topics, we have seen it in the teaser. The first interesting thing for us is of course this high resolution, so we invite the visitors to come to the floor and to find the small, the really small pixels. There are 8,000 pixels in one line, and so they're really small, you have to go about half a meter to the wall to see a single pixel. And so 
the first thing we start our presentation, normal presentation is about half an hour, and we are uh, starting it with uh, 2D, with high resolution images, high resolution time lapse. Uh, then we add the floor protection. Here we have a, a really great uh, time lapse from the surface of the sun, and you can see the audience is really sitting in the sun, and this feeling is tremendous. It's really uh, enthusiasm by the, by, the, by the visitors. You can really feel here the, the sun, the surface of the sun. And now the, one of our main uh, topics is this cultural heritage thing. You see here, okay, this is Tikal, I don't know if everybody knows this famous thing here from Sayak. And what we've done is we have uh, put the point clouds from the Sayak project and uh, created a, a, a special renderer for it, so we can use it in the deep space with wall and floor protection. So that means that you as a visitor are inside Tikal and you can go around in Tikal in 3D. And uh, the interactive thing is we give our control, this control is a small uh, smartphone, we give it to our visitors. So you can say, okay, we have to be into Tikal and if somewhere that's okay, interesting for you, you know uh, where you can go and we give the, the control the controller to the visitor and then he's walking around together with, all, with the whole group and maybe the, the uh, idealistic thing is if the visitor really knows something about Tikal, he can make the guided tour. So it's not the expert here in our museum who making the guided tour on their own, but really we invite the visitors to share their experience and to share what they uh, know about it. A little bit singular thing to that what Project Mosso is doing. Our really catching thing is of course is the quality. Uh, 8K resolution as a point cloud to see it's really almost photorealistic. We have here the great uh, invisible Rome from ScanLab. Uh, it's another great uh, way. This is a rendered movie, so we cannot uh, interact, but we can really go to this movie. And what we are doing is we are reaching really from small children, from four years old, uh, to the elderly people, to 90 years old, really uh, almost everybody. Our museum has about uh, 200,000 visitors a year and about 195,000 come to the deep space and in every single uh, presentation there is about 7 to 8 minutes about cultural heritage, about the 3D laser scan technology and most important thing, why we are doing this, why, we, why it is important to do these things. And so we are convinced that by really uh, addressing a big target group, uh, we can really make a difference. We have the SIAC project since uh, 2009, so more than uh, six years, almost seven years, we are showing this project to our visitors, and by now it's about 1.5 million visitors. We have shown this, and so we, uh, first of all, it's really interesting for our visitors. Of course, we ask our visitors, was the presentation interesting and which parts you really liked? And the interesting thing is we didn't uh, expect this, I would say, at least 50% says this is the cultural heritage, this part was maybe the best, the most interesting thing, because it, uh, they didn't expect this. They come to a museum of the future, and they're going through the Invisible Rome, or they're going through uh, Tikal, so they didn't expect, expect it in the Ars Electronica Center to see uh, this topic, but the way we did it, so the way we uh, created this in the deep space, they uh, get a, a great feeling and some of them said, okay, now I really start getting more information about this. And so what we try to do is to make really the first step. The first step for people who even don't know they're interested in these things, but maybe they uh, can get an idea and uh, hopefully some of them will go on and Will it maybe join the Project Muscle or join other, other projects? Or what we are doing uh, by doing this, uh, one archaeologist from Upper Austria came to us and said he has a great idea. He is working with 3D laser scans, and now we can show even 3D laser scans from Upper Austria in deep space. And the next project we are trying to set up uh, next March or April 
we want to create a, a point cloud a time lapse renderer uh, to uh, uh, find out about the way of archaeologized. The plan is they are digging a big Roman camp near Berlin. Uh, and we want to make the laser scan every single day and after the whole uh, project we try to make it to show it in a, in a time-lapse video so you can see how uh, the, the work of the ecologist uh, was going on. Uh, a few more things about the deep space. We are not only uh, getting into the cultural heritage in this way of point clouds but we are also opening our deep space uh, for universities to uh, make projects. We have a laser tracking uh, in our deep space so every single person can be tracked. And this is a really great project from the Art University in Linz. Uh, by walking around you can change the colors and there is a music edit and the task for the audience is to create a one single uh, color. To another a little bit more uh, gamification way again you can play in this deep space by walking around uh, five different games uh, used to be invented by our university and the third or the uh, maybe most interesting topic for the future for us is the universe within we created here a really uh, new anatomy room, anatomy of the future and we added here, and this is a little link to uh, to this SIAC project, we are uh, showing here the first place worldwide to show cinematic rendering. This is a special software using uh, to show uh, data out of the computer tomography in a photorealistic way and we're the first to show this and to show the human body and to make a journey through the human body. Thank you very much.